So I'm Catherine Sickink, and I'm the Ryan Family Professor of Human Rights Policy at the Harvard Kennedy School, and I'm delighted to be here speaking with you. Good afternoon, Catherine. It's a pleasure to have you here with us, and we're going to ask you some questions about uh, your work and your conceptions on transitional justice and human rights. And I'm Stefan Parmentier of the University of Louvain. So, first uh, question which I would like to pose to you is, uh, how is your conception uh, about transitional justice? What does it mean to you? And uh, in which way have you worked with this concept uh, in the past? In my book, The Justice Cascade, I thought about transitional justice as being forms of accountability and responsibility for massive human rights violations, mainly in societies that had made a transition from authoritarianism to democracy. For that reason, I used cases like Greece, Portugal, Argentina, mm -hmm. and others that had experienced this transition from authoritarianism to democracy. Later in our data set, our transitional justice uh, collaborative data set, which is available at transitionaljusticedata.com. Uh, we decided to look at cases both of transition from democracy to authoritarianism and from conflict to peace, or cases that involve both. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's very extensive, of course, in a certain way, because many more cases are uh, fitting in that category. Do you see any limits to transitional justice as a concept? I, today, I believe that, uh, oddly, transitional justice should not be limited only to transitions. Because I believe that there are a series of cases where there have been a serious human rights violation for which we need some accountability or reparations in countries that are not transitional. And the best example would be the United States. For example, its use of torture under the Bush administration. I believe we should have transitional justice, that is accountability for Bush administration torture, mm -hmm. uh, in a country that hasn't passed through a transition. It's an interesting uh, concept <laughs> indeed. Let's see how this will further develop. Uh, now another quick question is uh, about the challenges to uh, transitional justice. Where do you identify some of the main challenges uh, for the, the discipline, if we may call it like that, over the next couple of years? Um, the, you know, some of the most serious issues that um, we have confronted in our research on, on transitional justice and in our database is, of course, there are so many now multiple accountabilities as we call them in the database. So mm -hmm. we started out only documenting amnesty laws, human rights prosecutions, and truth commissions. Mm -hmm. But then we realized that transitional justice meant much more than that. And we added to that uh, reparations policies, vetting and lustration policies, uh, customary forms of justice. We still are not capturing all aspects of mm. transitional justice, so increasingly mm -hmm. uh, we think of transitional justice including all forms of memory work, what Elizabeth Helene has called memory work. Mm -hmm. and that would include, of course, memorialization, for example, and sites of conscience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that becomes very broad. And again, is, is there any specific uh, limitation that should be put on these kinds of uh, accountability mechanisms? Mm -hmm. I believe that all these types of accounting mechanisms are interesting and important for scholars to study. So I wouldn't put limitations on it as a matter of no, scholars shouldn't be studying these accountability mechanisms. Mm -hmm. From As a result of my own research, I believe that we should be asking hard questions and doing good research about the impact that different mechanisms have on different outcomes. Sometimes we make claims that are just, in fact, too broad about the impact of transitional justice without having done adequate mm -hmm. research to back up our claims. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, uh, a last question maybe in this uh, regard. Where do you see the, the space and the place of human rights within that broad discourse of transitional justice? Mm -hmm. How specific or how different is human rights from uh, justice 
needs and justice, uh, justice objectives. I've always seen my work on transitional justice as being directly and integrally related to my work on human rights. So I don't see them as two separate areas. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I would say that human rights is the broader circle and that transitional justice is a subset for me mm -hmm. of, of human rights. Having said that, uh, transitional justice has taken me even deeper into criminal law in particular, mm -hmm. and I've had to learn a lot more about, about criminal law mm -hmm. uh, and about memory than I did just as a scholar of human rights. Good. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this has been short, but very concise and precise. <laughs> so thanks a lot for, uh, for your availability and for your wise thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen.